It's Bill from Suffolk in England here. Please join me as I convert an ex-military defender and take her on trips to interesting countries around the world. Enjoy the trip. Good afternoon, it's Bill from Suffolk here. Today I want to talk about a subject which affects all 4x4 owners and that is jacking the vehicle. I'm not going to be saying an awful lot about the use of high lift jacks. This has been well covered elsewhere in other videos but I do just want to touch on the subject of safety. We've all got them and they are very useful in particular for the recovery situation but they are inherently unstable they will try to slip out and the vehicle is likely to fall causing serious injury. And a couple of tips about how to make it safer. One of the things I've done is at the front and the rear I welded lugs on underneath the bumper and so you put the shoe of the jack between the lugs and it can't slip away. The other thing you can do is use a jack adapter like this. Now you can buy these commercially. This one was actually made up for me by a good friend of mine who is sadly departed, a self-style agricultural engineer who's an absolute genius at these sorts of things. And so the top part goes into the jacking point and the shoe of the jack goes in the bottom. And again, it makes it inherently uh, safe and stable and greatly reduces the risk of accidents. Please, please, please be safe when using high lift jacks. I'm going to talk today about the use of bottle jacks and they are the day-to-day -day workhorse. And 90% of the time when you have to change a wheel, you're going to be using a bottle jack, although admittedly much less in the recovery situation. Now I first became aware of what a decent bottle jack looked like when I bought my early discovery where they are supplied as standard. These jacks are made by Corum of Italy. They are nice and low so they will fit in underneath the axle even when you've got a puncture and they've got a telescopic design so they go up to the full height to enable the wheel to be changed without any problem. Furthermore they have a saddle at the top to go under the axle as the safety feature. So let me show you one of these great jacks in action. I'm here jacking up the rear axle of the Defender and up she goes. But what's happening? The piston seems to have jammed and as I pump the jack it's just rocking back and forward. Well that's not very good is it? Well it doesn't matter, I've got a second one here so I'll show you this one instead. And up she goes, and up she goes, uh huh. So she goes up and I'm afraid she doesn't hold and she's dropping back down again immediately. Hmm, well that is not what is supposed to happen. One of the things I really dislike, and it seems to happen too often, is I pay good money for goods and services and then when you really need it it lets you down and that was the case with these jacks the story behind them I was so impressed with the jack in the Discovery I decided to buy a similar one for the Defender I went and bought one uh, identical model used it for about 18 months and then it failed and I thought oh well it's probably just a rogue one and I went and bought another and that one failed too again after about 18 months and the last time it failed it was actually under uh, very awkward circumstances I was driving back through Spain on a dual carriageway towing my big trailer full of equipment I had a puncture in the trailer I couldn't get fully off the road because the safety lane wasn't wide enough um, and I was sticking out into the slow lane and I obviously wanted to do a very quick uh, wheel change and get going again and bloody hell the jack didn't work and so instead of it being five minutes it was more like quarter of an hour 
We had the safety triangle out, of course, and my partner was down the road frantically waving at the ongoing traffic. I didn't have a problem with the heavy trucks. They were well aware of what's, what was going on and they gave me a wide berth. But there were a couple of drivers, Spanish ladies in their little Seats, on the mobile phone, completely oblivious to the world. And uh, both of them, they missed me by inches. It was not a pleasant experience. And I thought, never again, I've got to have a reliable solution. I would like to say about Corum, I mean, they are a recognised manufacturer. They are OEM suppliers. They supply to um, Land Rover and to other firms, Iveco and so forth. And they are a name brand. And so I was very, very disappointed to have two of their jacks fail on me for no good reason. Well, the spec for the jack I really needed was not much different to the jack in the Discovery. It's got to be low enough so it fits under the axle when you've got a puncture, and it's got to lift high enough uh, for you to be able to change the wheel. I noted with amusement that the publisher of one of the major uh, 4x4 YouTube channels in Australia said you actually need two jacks. And he said you need a small bottle jack to get under the axle when you've got a puncture and you then uh, shift the weight to a bigger jack in order to get it up to height. I can only suppose that down there they don't have telescopic jacks because telescopic jacks are indeed the correct answer and that's where my search started. In my search for a new bottle jack I decided to revisit the mechanical jack which came with the vehicle and indeed is supplied with all military Land Rovers. It's a screw type design but is telescopic. You will see it's got a two stage screw to it. Firstly checking the performance. Well there's no doubt that it does work. Uh, we are lifting the axle here. It's a little bit slow and a bit of effort is required to turn it but it works absolutely fine. There are however a couple of downsides to it. Firstly when the job is done you can't just let the jack down you have to wind it down which is a little bit tedious and takes a bit of time. A bigger drawback is how to set the jack. If you merely put the handle in and turn it the whole mechanism turns and the jack doesn't raise at all. It is in fact a two-handed operation with one hand you've got to hold the shoe and with the other hand you've got to turn the uh, screw at the bottom. And of course you're going to be doing this in the field, lying in the road, maybe snowing, maybe driving rain, and you have to wind it up manually until the jack's in contact with the axle when you can then use the handle. As an engineer, I rather like this jack. It's simple. There's nothing to go wrong with it, and it does the job. It's also fairly lightweight. But it does have a couple of practical drawbacks, and I decided on balance to try and find a good hydraulic telescopic jack instead. So my search started for a new bottle jack, meeting following requirements. Be no more than 180 millimeters high when closed, and lifting to around 450 millimeters. I can of course get one off eBay and look at this amazing offer, 4 tonne telescopic bottle jack for £17 delivered. Somehow I don't think so. After a lot of research I homed in on the Omega lift range, they have a wide range of equipment, good quality and I bought their 4 tonne telescopic bottle jack. And here it is in action, jacking up the back of the Land Rover and as you might imagine, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Indeed, it's a bit overrated for what I need. Probably a two-ton jack would be perfectly adequate. Now, the one improvement I could make to the jack is to give it an axle saddle to prevent the possibility of it slipping out when jacking underneath the axle. I don't want to make the saddle permanent because there will be occasions when I don't need it. So I'm going to make it removable. I will use the saddle from the old Corum jack 
and I'll make up a collar using this off cutter steel which you see here. I firstly need to cut off the collar well that didn't take long did it? I'm now dressing off the sharp edges and I need to shape it in order to take the axle saddle well that's a good fit so this is my welding setup flux cord welding set gas torch and the workpiece clamped in the vise ready for welding it's very chilly in here so we need to apply preheat to ensure good fusion and now a dollop of the old metal glue so this is what the welded saddle looks like and now fitting it to the jack I think it'll do the job my last comment is going to be on jacking inside the garage or workshop now the most commonly used type of jack for this is the trolley jack but I would like to point out that the average trolley jack you get from a car accessory shop isn't going to be suitable. It needs to have high enough capacity and a high enough lift. I show here a 3 ton SGS trolley jack which is perfectly suitable. It will easily lift uh, two corners of the Land Rover at once, either one side or one of the ends. The main negative of a big trolley jack is that it is big and it's heavy and this one weighs 45 kilos. I find I tend not to use this jack very much uh, for this reason. When I'm trying to manoeuvre it around in the workshop and I've got things on the floor, I may have spare parts, tools, cables in the way, and it's just too cumbersome. In practice, I tend to use this big boy here, which is a 20 ton lorry jack, which I actually acquired for free. It does exactly the same job. Keep your eyes open, go to a car boot sale, look in local classified ads and you can probably pick up a jack like this for virtually nothing and you'll save yourself a few pounds. So that's it for today guys. I think it's time to go inside and get warm. I'll be posting some more videos shortly, again based on my experiences of what it takes to keep an old Defender going. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.